Welcome to my video on market equilibrium. I'm going to be fairly brief. Uh, this is just for a principles class. And here's what's happened to the last couple of videos. We had videos where I show about a demand curve. Where there's this downward sloping demand curve representing people's willingness to pay. And we had videos showing a supply curve. There's this upward sloping video curve representing sellers minimum willingness to sell the lowest price they're willing to accept. And in this video, I intend to bring these two curves together to show what happens in a market. Now a market is characterized by three major ideas. What are we selling in the market? What is the good? And where are we meeting? And when are we meeting? Now that can mean lots of different things eBay is an online marketplace where people can meet from all over the world or other times a marketplace can be like at your local farmer's market where you meet in person on Saturdays to buy and sell corn and whatever else. So we're going to leave those questions aside and we're just going to put demand and supply together. A bunch of self-interested buyers and sellers meet together and none of them actually care about the well-being of the others. The demanders are maximizing utility, the suppliers are maximizing profits. Uh, how do we find out how many units of the good will get sold? Well, we can look at this market and look at the gap between the supply curve, which is your minimum willingness to sell or willingness to accept, and the demand curve, which is willingness to pay. And if the market functions well, if it meets all the assumptions of a competitive market, what we expect to see is any time our willingness to pay is greater than or equal to our willingness to sell. Now, if our willingness to pay is greater than or equal to our willingness to sell, you can bet that there's going to be some sort of transaction that the buyer will buy from the seller because it benefits them both. So let's look at that on the graph here. Let's start from left to right on the quantity axis. So we'll start way over here. Over here, the willingness to pay is up high. The willingness to sell is down low. There's room for a transaction that benefits buyer and seller. And so they'll do it, they'll trade. And then as we move farther along, there's still willingness to pay that's greater than willingness to sell all the way up until this point where the two lines cross. Up until that point, every potential unit sold has a willingness to pay that is greater than a willingness to sell. And so up until that point, we expect sales to occur that will benefit both buyer and seller. And so that point is going to become very important to us. Now, why do we not sell more than this? Let me give it a label first, actually. We'll call it Q star. It's gonna be our equilibrium, but I'll explain why in just a minute. Why don't we sell more than Q star? Well, if we tried to sell out here, then consumers' willingness to pay is less than the minimum price sellers are willing to sell for. There's no way to sell to the right of Q star that benefits both buyer and seller. There's no deal that makes them both better off. And so there's no reason for a market to have a higher quantity than this Q star. And so this Q star becomes very important to us. That's our equilibrium quantity. And it will occur at an equilibrium price that matches it. At that price, the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. That's equilibrium in a nutshell. It is the price and quantity that make it so that buyers and sellers agree on what should happen. Now, a couple of things to point out. At this price, every buyer who wants to buy the good will. And at this price, every seller who wants to sell the good will. Every mutually tr beneficial transaction occurs. Remember all this stuff that we shaded in earlier? All that gap between willingness to pay and willingness to sell? Every time 
the willingness to pay is greater than willingness to sell, a competitive market brings a transaction. So we call this efficient because in equilibrium, there is no way to improve the position of a buyer without harming a seller. And there's no way to improve the position of a seller without harming a buyer. Everyone is as well off as possible. And there's no reason for anyone to change what they're doing at this price and at this quantity. So for instance, let's look at this portion of the demand curve. Those people, are they have a low willingness to pay, either because of preference or because of budget constraints. But at the market price, buying the good at P-Star is paying more than they're willing to pay. It will make them worse off. And so they won't do it. What about over here? Well, their willingness to sell is high, which means that their costs are high, and the low price does not justify sales of additional units of the good. After this Q star, each sale would decrease their profit. Um, I'm dancing all around something called the first fundamental welfare theorem of economics, which is basically just that efficient, that competitive markets have efficient equilibria. So yeah, I think that's all I need to say about equilibrium right now. Uh, watch out for future videos. We'll talk about when markets aren't in equilibria. We'll talk about when equilibrium changes, all kinds of fun stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope it was useful. If not, too bad. Happy econing. See you next time.